welcome to the January 10th, 2020.
starting this. I'd like to have a say. New compliance analysts.
um, about the pool, we have opportunities for our participants at the Jim Daly Fitness Center to go to Eula uh, pool area to uh, utilize their pool for uh, swimming and uh, lap swim. So they have to be a current member of uh, the Jim Daly Fitness Center to participate in, in the um, util utilization of the Eula pool, swimming pool. So staff does have a, a few rules and regulations that EULA is requiring of us. So they do have that information at the Jim Daly Fitness Community Center, Fitness Center. And that concludes my report. I'll be able to give you a <clears throat> We do. Yes, activities do continue to uh, go on. We we just have a space set aside for anyone who would like to come in and get out of the cold elements, and uh, we have snacks and water and things for them. It's five. It's East East Little Rock, Southwest, Stevens, Dunbar, West Central. Really, I applaud the city for doing this. I think this is a, a great use of the facilities that the park has made available. And uh, I think it helps those in the neighborhood that are in need. So the link to go to the website. And thank you all to the staff. I'd like to mention on that, Linda, the um, there are the warming centers, which Shawanda mentioned and you mentioned, but there also is another thing that happens when we have a certain period of time and we work with the van and we'll turn on um, our Dunbar or East Little Rock Community Center as an overnight option for up to three nights. And we'll open a gym and, and uh, individuals of need can come in and spend time in that facility. So we're um, the reason I brought that up is not only because you brought that up, but we're looking at having that uh, opportunity coming up because of the winter weather that's approaching. We might even need that as early as Sunday. Um, so just wanted to mention that as well. Um, but I'd like to take this time real quick. I was informed that our previous chairperson, Matt Bowie, um, actually has a conflicting meeting at one. And with our time frame, um, he would like to be excused. And I just want to say I appreciate his effort over the years and, and working with you has been a pleasure. I really appreciate it and uh, thank you. And um, our social media, um, Brittany has posted a post about you, which is uh, great. So if you haven't seen that, it, it talks a little bit about uh, Matt Bowie and all that he's done. So I appreciate you. And I uh, just wanted to say thank you to uh, Ben France and um, JT Fursell for taking over. And uh, I don't think JT knew that he'd be running the meeting today, but I uh, appreciate that and um, we'll continue. But thank you, Matt, so much. Um, thanks, Matt. You, really, heck of a job, and we appreciate it. Um, and for what it's worth, when I became chair 83 years ago, that's how it <laughs> happened to me. Hey, here, go run the meeting now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like getting thrown right in the fire. Um, so, operations? Yes, absolutely. So, if we can continue to uh, Justin Dorsey for operations, that'd be great. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, some just highlights off of our report, some things I'd like to, to point out that really proud of. Um, the downtown district uh, this past month uh, rebuilt and did some uh, work at City Hall um, around the back courtyard. And they took, a, took an area that had several maintenance issues and a lot of drainage issues and other, other type things and were able to really beautify that with rock work and certain types of plantings. And so you're on the, the back side of City Hall um, and see some of that area and how they've revitalized it. It looks really, really good. Uh, I know we've already mentioned it, but just real briefly, Jim Daly, the Hyde Co. that notice to proceed was 15. So that 32 week contract puts that project um, towards the end of August. Um, all, as Leland said, all the 
components have been ordered, but uh, with the lead times, it's looking like that won't come in and work won't uh, start on that portion of the project until uh, later in May. Uh, but we are scheduling a reconstruction walkthrough with them in the next week or two to, to line out work and what aspects of that project to go ahead and uh, get started to try to get the construction done. Contractors excited to get in there, get everything that can be done. We'll, we'll work to get that done prior to that big equipment coming in. Uh, Interstate Park, uh, the roadway, that project is completed. Is it not picking? There's uh, Interstate uh, Park, the roadway project is completed. The only thing it's lacking is the new signage, which we just received in this past week. So it's on the schedule to be installed. And then the new road striping, speed bumps, and signage will all be there. So that's, that's really nice if you haven't been out there to check that out. Uh, Western Hills, the restroom at Western Hills, I'd reported last month, that was scheduled to be delivered January 9th um, yesterday, but due to, to weather that we had last week and uh, weather this week and as soft as the ground is, uh, they had some dirt work and excavation that still had to happen and the electrician was in there and it was uh, going to be very conflictual with the heavy equipment and the large crane that had to come in. So we had to postpone that. The new date is January 30th. Um, so we have all the work pretty much completed now. Um, so that will be installed and finalized a little bit later this month. Um, we are processing through uh, the last bit of our bond funds for park amenities. We have several in process and have already issued POs. So there's a lot of our parks um, that we'll be seeing some new amenities coming in really soon this spring. Um, and then lastly, I just want to... Um, say that we have uh, Courtney Perry here with us today. Uh, safety we did have a report. And I, I don't see it in the packet, so we'll make sure, not sure what happened there uh, to get that report emailed out. Uh, but we're going to start uh, including a uh, safety report. It's, it's a really, really nice, well done um, report that we'll have in your packets that will be emailed. And then Courtney will be here at the uh, commission meetings and available for any questions or any specifics to go, to go through that. So appreciate all the work he's done, um, and we're working to develop a plan moving forward for this year for getting uh, all of our staff trained and, uh, and all the required trainings as well as just additional safety measures uh, to make sure that we're up to standards on that. Um, and that concludes highlights of my report. Okay, yeah. Air's not here, and the city attorney's not here, so we're going to take <laughs> high gear and <laughs> get through this. So, uh, old business, WebEx for 2024. Say no. Yeah, and essentially, I mean, those are old business items. So, I mean, if we, if there's no discussion, there's no discussion. But um, I'd like to discuss that item. Okay. Um, Obviously, it's. It's an issue. They all have issues. All the platforms. I, I don't know enough to know which one's better. I have a comment. Um, so this was tabled at the last meeting, and it is reflected in the minutes that we tabled it, uh, pending some additional information. I asked Beth Carpenter for a copy of the resolution, and she has sent that to me. Matt got a copy. Leland, happy. I think others. And it does require that if you are attending a meeting virtually as a commissioner, that you actually be located within the corporate limits of Little Rock. So I can't be in D.C., call in for a meeting, and be counted as president. Um, there was some discussion that that may come up again uh, for the city board, and I've just wondered if we knew if there were any plans to bring that up or not. This would affect my vote on the issue of WebEx uh, availability for attendance. Um, I know there's several of us that are up for reappointment, and I wanted to understand this issue a little bit more um, as we start moving in to the REF 22 and 4. I don't, I don't think it was the question of using WebEx or Zoom or whatever. It was the question of whether we would even allow virtual attendance. Gotcha. Okay. So I guess maybe... Uh, and if any of our board members have an update. I think Cappy has something to say.
Do you remember that? Not about disallowing, and I'll apologize. I don't recall seeing the resolution, but I do remember in a meeting that it was stated that we would get it. I think the position that I was in is because I was in Conway coming back from a meeting and was on WebEx. And then when the topic came, I just thought, well, if I didn't tell you I was in Conway, you wouldn't have known where I was, you know. But I just feel like that could be a, a hindrance if people are able to attend, but just not physically. But if we're going to do away with WebEx totally, then... Yeah. Webex. So if that's the case, then I guess we don't need to discuss Webex, but I do stand if we continue Webex, I think your location should not be. If I can help clarify that, I think there's a few different things going on. So the resolution which Linda asked for is it was a resolution that was passed that had nothing to do with this this commission. <clears throat> Um, and it was all about that. It said if you're on a commission or a board and you're on a WebEx, you had to uh, be there. I mean, you had to be within the city limits. Um, I think Linda's point is is relative in the fact that if you're, I guess the point kind of is if you're not around, you could still participate by being on WebEx. So currently, because of the resolution, it says that we can't do that. Um, to change that, I mean, obviously that would be something that, completely not within this commission and nor really myself, it would be a board matter. So um, I leave that at that. I mean, that would, and so, and then if the board decides not to do WebEx anymore for that board, does that extend to the commissions and boards within the whole, okay. Okay. Okay, because I, I think I just started the conversation in December as, as just asking, is WebEx still a valuable asset to this commission, not starting this, this other conversation? But at this point, it seems like we should wait to understand what the city board is going gonna, is gonna to actually do. Yeah. And just since we're on the subject, I apologize for everybody again for the delays with the WebEx. We had three IT professionals here and we still had challenges. Um, I'm going to have a mock set up before next meeting and understand how to do it myself. And um, and I mean, we've been working through this for two years. So it's just we have to figure out a way to, to make WebEx work. Um, other individuals, associations do. I don't know what the challenge in this location is, but we'll, we'll get there. I'm optimistic. Thank you. And I wasn't here for the conversation last week, um, but you know whether a, a commissioner can join from outside, you know, for that aside, I think um, the WebEx is useful for posting the meetings online for the public to see. So I don't know if we got rid of WebEx, I assume that means that would go away as well, which is a pretty nice feature online. Yeah, um, I would look, this is when we need Beth here, but according to our bylaws, we, we, put, we post all that on our website and that's a requirement is our minutes and our recordings and all that. So, I mean, in theory, if something went away, we would still be recording everything and still posting everything. I think it would be an audio recording. I think that's what we had to do for the master planning committee like last year. Um, and just a quick comment to our two um, board ladies. Um, I, I think it's an honestly an awful idea to get rid of WebEx for the commissions. This period, I, there's too many people that are not retired or do not like have time every meeting. And for us, if we're only meeting 12 times a year, if you're sick like Ben is and you have two other times that you're out or something come up, you're off the commission. It's out of your hands. 
and the so total of four. It's a really short sighted to get rid of it for commissions. Just putting that out there, not directed to you all, but just to, if you all would carry that to see your meeting. Well, sure, and and a lot of things in our city are that's the way we don't do it. But I mean, it's the twenty first century. It'd be nice to be able to do some things like the rest of the world, and I think this is one of them that's helpful. And technology issues aside, I think it's very helpful because if it's an audio only, no one's going to listen. No one's ever going to go back and listen to the recording. To Mike's point, it's nice to be able to watch a video, fast forward through it, get to the part you want. Audio, you have no reference of what you're looking for. When was that ordinance passed? It was during COVID. April 2020. As far as being within the corporate area? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, anything else? Comments. Um, next item we covered. And third item in old business. I don't see Mike. Is, he's not here, so we can skip that. We're transitioning, so um, Mike is no longer involved in our social media. Brittany is our um, coordinator of social media and marketing now, and she's on the new business, as, as, and will give us a quick report. Business bond project update. I'll let Justin take care of that. He's um, just give us a quick update on those three major projects from bond. I think some of that's for uh, Director uh, Lewis here. Real, real briefly, then I'll run through the three. Um, Boyle, obviously, that bond project's a new playground, uh, a really large playground going in by the pavilions. It's been ordered, approved, everything's good. Um, it'll be coming in in April or May. So we'll be prepping for the uh, demo of the old playground uh, there by Pavilion 3 and getting ready to install that. That'll be spring when that one's coming in. Is that by the zip line, like that area right there? It's, it's okay. That area. We've, we've worked, um, I think, with Crafton Toll on that and have got a design of that and have the renderings of that playground, and I think that's been posted, and um, that project's all online, and we're just waiting a little bit closer to delivery. Um, It'll be April to May in that time frame. They usually will email us once fabrication's complete and we get about a 30 day kind of lead time of a specific date. And that's when we'll go in and start doing our grade work and getting our crews ready. So, um, Panky Park is uh, much the same the playground and pavilion and basketball courts uh, and some sidewalk works all going to be redone there as part of that project. Uh, the design um, looks really nice. Playground, pavilion, everything's been ordered. Um, that's all been approved and done in POs, and it's being being constructed. Uh, again, that timeline hit. Is, I mean, we're pushing them through as quickly as we can, but a delivery date came back between April and May tentatively right now for that one as well. So those two may hit very, very close to the same time, so we'll have to get uh, um, all of our staff on board to, to get those installed and good. Uh, Kiwanis, I'm really, really excited about Kiwanis. Um, We've got the scope redoing the walking trail, new playgrounds, new security lighting, um, really, really re revamping that park also. Uh, we did have an opportunity with the playground, um, and I hope to have renderings for y'all at the next commission meeting um, because we were the first in the state, and according to our playground rep, we may have been very close to the first in the nation to get this new playground that was just released. Um, the, the design, there's a lot of new patents by landscape structures on this new playground. Um, the playability and the play features um, and the design of this is really, really cool. And it's going to be um, a really feature piece and really proud to bring that into Arkansas. Um, but it's so new that they don't even have it all in their systems to give us renderings until after the 12th. So this week uh, we should be getting renderings of colors. We've seen it on the model and we've seen, seen that, but to do an official order rendering. But um, we've got our name on the, on the list, have that order. That's all been approved. And I got uh, confirmation from... Cameron, our rep, that he thinks we can have it, guess what, in April or May. So uh, our, our staff will have some challenges of, of coordinating the installation of all those, but excited to have that um, as early in spring as possible uh, for, for citizens to enjoy those three parks and three new playgrounds. So 
uh, really excited, and I can uh, include that uh, renderings if y'all haven't seen the one of the two we've got uh, in the next packet. Was I able to? That's, that's good to hear. Yeah. Thanks. Can I ask a random question about um, Panky? Is there any way, and I'm guessing the answer is no, is there any way to connect it with Connor Park in any way, shape, or form? They're virtually across the street from each other. And they're both great areas, totally different things to do, but I mean. I can help, I can address that quickly. Um, the highway department manages Highway 10, which is the barrier between the two. Um, they currently have a plan to um, renovate that area and enlarge the highway, similar to what's, what's farther east that they just completed. Um, in that, there was a lot of discussions where I asked about sidewalks and different connections. Um, in uh, Panky Park itself, they're having to take some of the uh, change. I was going to say take some of the land, but it's not really taking any acreage. They're just changing some different access points. So what they're really working on doing is any house that has an individual driveway onto the highway, they're trying to remove those and have access from the back. Because of the, some different negotiations, I worked with them to try to build a sidewalk from the park up to the sidewalks that are on the highway. Now, granted, you know, you're walking along a highway, but um, there will be some better connections like that. But in, in terms of like a, a bridge or a tunnel or something like that, you're right, there's, there's not any feasibility in that. But you would have to go down to, I believe, the nearest intersection, which is um, Sam Peck. Yeah, and cross back and, and go, so. Great question, though, thanks. Highlights. Hey, if Brittany can just give us a quick uh, highlight on events and, and what's going on in social media. Yeah, um, so I'm sure some of you ha are following the page already. If you're not, please like it, follow us on Instagram. Our uh, handles have been changed to LR Parks Rec, so you can find us on all the usual um, platforms. As far as events coming up, we're working on Little Rock Marathon, um, Total Eclipse of the Rock, which is, of course, expecting um, tens of thousands of visitors to the capital city for the eclipse in April. Um, other than that, Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service, where we'll highlight some volunteers that are out in our parks cleaning and um, bettering our community. So follow us, like us, share us, all those things. Awesome. I have one event to add to that. Um, if everybody has not heard, February 8th is um, will be the State of the City address by the mayor, uh, which starts, I believe, at 6 at the uh, American Museum of Fine Arts. So um, please participate if you are available. Thank you. No report. Social media and outreach. Let's pass on that one. Ben. Uh, conservancy. Anything on that? So, was Matt our contact for the conservancy? I think Lauren was. Lauren. I would like to um, suggest to the commission that in um, as a maybe as a for the next meeting a new item for agenda is to to review our subcommittees and potentially put some new um, you know like new um, leaders for those groups. That's a great idea. Next time. Yep. So that'd be a new business item. Leads into item number eight, agenda items for next meeting. Uh, subcommittee is a great one. Any anything else anyone wants to talk about next time? What park or area can you guys highlight for us, or is there is that too much? On the no, there's never. Busy I'd probably be, with those. I'd be happy to stuff and everything else. There's plenty to highlight. Um, the um, ARPA projects are, are one, which are our community centers, our senior center here. Um, those are all moving forward. Um, those are great projects to review. Um, the ones that we just did, our bond projects, um, 
um, different projects we'll be discussing for our sales tax initiative. Um, if all that is, is, you know, comes out here shortly, um, tons of different projects. Yeah, absolutely. It's what the interests of the uh, commission would like for us to report out on. Anybody have any? Absolutely. So on the agenda, the, I set a new goal this year to actually finalize the agenda in this meeting. And so staff will actually uh, finalize it and they're going to start trying to post it the Monday after so that it's not last minute. And so people can, um, you know, comment on that. But any anything that we can do to get the new agenda items, um, you know, now would be beneficial. But, yeah, I'm trying to, to in, increase the turnaround time on those things. I think we're gonna, I would be fine if everybody else is on board with maybe skipping the park update next time. Sure. I think we're gonna spend, what I'm hoping is a, a good amount of time on the subcommittees. I think that is important. I'm glad you brought that up. So, um, so maybe we focus on that next time and, uh, and then move, move back into our uh, routine that we've had this fall. Is that okay mm -hmm. with everybody? Board liaison feedback. Christmas, happy new year. It's good to be back. I'll, I'll, I was, I'll say, I have a, one comment, and I just want to say thank you all for um, helping Parks Department get a little extra money for their budget. Uh, we received some extra funds in our maintenance uh, area, so um, that will go a long way, and we'll be able to utilize some of that for um, contractual maintenance and 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 different projects that we're looking for forward to in 2024. So thank you. <laughs> hey, we. I appreciate it. I'm in place for next time. Uh, two other comments. Um, along with the parks budget, maybe just in our packet, we should have a copy of the parks 2024 budget attached. I tried to look for it online. I know it's probably buried in the document pages at the city, but if we could just pull the parks budget and have it available in our packet. What kind of detail level would you want to go down to? Because we... Yeah, maybe a summary by division or something. Okay. And then um, the second item, and I, I appreciated the reminder, there are seven positions open on this uh, commission right now, posted on the city. Those of us that were up for renewal, a lot of us, uh, we expire at the end of this month. And so uh, I, I don't know if we'll be reappointed or not, but there'll be seven people available for change a little bit of just orientation. Uh, I, I'm looking to you, JT, but you and Ben just know that you may have a lot of new faces. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Can our board liaison speak to that? Did y'all recently go through any um, voting on any, or I don't know if you call it voting, but I know that y'all. Even what's the process? This is my first time. I'd be curious to even know. What yeah, I mean, I know that y'all did. Y'all. Yeah. Select our new. Anyway, right. okay. I'll ch I'll check with the city clerk as well. Social media. Sure, that's it, great. It had a deadline to apply uh, of last Friday.
Frau Paul. It's concerning to me that there's seven, I mean, that there wouldn't be a little bit more um, separation in the in the time frames. But well, they were, I think of the majority of those were people that filled unexpired terms. I understand now. There were, it there was a, staggered. yeah. We, it was an inordinate amount of unexpired terms, I think is what. Okay. Happened. Yeah, picking up from two years ago or something, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Meeting's adjourned. All right.